And today on the show, I'm going to be talking to Ryan Lanier. She has written a cool book and come up with this methodology for staying calm. It's about getting out the door on time and with ease so you can arrive um, where you're going calm and collected and prepared, or as I used to call it in some of my marketing things, fresh as a daisy. Um, so we want to do that. And full disclosure, we had a hiccup today and it did not go as smooth as we planned, but that's the whole point of today's show. So I love that we already started off on that. And Ryan, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here and yeah, walking the walk right here. <laughs> right. So it's one of those things. We know what we know and then we don't know something and we don't know it until we're right there. And so um, being able to adjust on the fly is almost as important as being able to get out the door on time. But Ryan, tell me a little bit about what kinds of things you hear from your clients or you experienced in your own life that um, lead you to think that women in general have these perfectionist tendencies that kind of get blown out of proportion and, and, and really hinder us in getting what we want? Wow. It's so funny. They really truth tell on themselves within the first second of talking to a woman, they're saying, sorry, right. you know, we're saying, sorry. Um, I'm, this isn't perfect. Like, as if that is the goal, we are, you know, we just assume mm -hmm. everyone else has it together and we don't. And I think um, <laughs> it's so it's so easy to just fall right into that mindset of, well, I'm failing, I'm failing, I'm never doing it right. And you just you hear I hear it all the time um, from myself, even though I'm coaching women to stop using this terminology mm -hmm. um, of it. I, it's we're you know we got we got decades of practice in here using words like well someday when I'm organized I'll mm -hmm. and just that 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 whole mindset that now isn't where you're supposed to be like being on the journey is yeah. not like that that making a mistake is bad you know boy I I sure learned something as we were getting ready today you know okay we, yeah. we gotta we gotta learn from the mistakes i used to be a super huge perfectionist myself and i'm kind of glad that i started getting over it before social media got big because the mm. examples we are shown now are so intense and unreal mm -hmm. um that there's mm. no way just you know everybody consider social media as a stock image catalog and it's all staged it's all models you know people are always like why don't you have more pictures of your work projects on your website and it's like you know you've been in people's houses actually helping them declutter it doesn't look good when we're done it doesn't even look as bad as it is when you take a picture of it from afar. It's really hard to get that translation of the feeling in a space in a photograph. And so all those pictures about the end result last about 30 seconds, just long enough to take the photo. And as soon as someone uses it, it doesn't look that way anymore. So you're trying to you're striving for something that's not actually possible. Do you find that as well? Oh, I wish we could strike Pinterest perfect from mm -hmm. our vocabulary. Yeah, that right there, that right there that also begins with P. I never actually put that together. <laughs> ah, it's you and your alliteration. I, Ryan well, loves I, alliteration. I do, I do. <laughs> and Pinterest perfect means a form of perfection, right? Mm -hmm. And so we already, well, if it's not, if it's not going to be Pinterest perfect, um, I don't want to, you know, I don't even want to try. Um, I think We've, we even as professional organizers have been identifying ourselves as, well, I'm either the Pinterest perfect ty type mm -hmm. or I'm the functional type. Like it's like right. we've there's decided no that there's one or the other and oh my gosh, I wish we could fix that, don't you? Yeah, I recently have, well, recently, time is so weird lately. It's actually <laughs> been several years that I've been studying uh, knows, but recently, <laughs> right? <laughs> metacognition and how our brains work and it turns out that you know it will develop habits and it loves a feedback loop and if you're saying you're sorry all the time or you're a failure or that sucked or I yeah. failed or I didn't come through that's what your brain thinks you can do mm 
-hmm. So um, I love in your book, which we'll, we'll get a little bit more into, you really talked about the celebrations and it really is. It's like, Ryan, we got on TV today. Awesome. Yes, we did it. We're just saying. <laughs> Learn something new. <laughs> right. What you didn't see is me rushing around going, oh my God, I didn't connect with Ryan early enough and, and the lighting outside my window is funky today and I had to adjust a whole bunch of curtains and lighting and I still have too much glare. You know, it's all, yeah, it's fine. It's real life, it's you know? Real. Honestly, like, I don't want to repeat 10 minutes ago. I mean, my pits are mm -hmm. still sweaty from that, but like, I love how this is exactly what we're trying to help women understand is it is mm -hmm. the lessons and yeah. the floundering around and running around and calling our husbands for help or for whoever's around to help like that is how we get through life and right now it's like look what we're doing we're talking yeah. it's fine it's fine it's great it's, actually yeah <laughs> so do you have any tips for helping people not be sorry and not feel like a failure all the time. I love telling people about the be better mindset instead of um, the perfection mindset. But do you have any good tricks for, for things you say to yourself to get you out of it? Well, I mean, you've got to breathe. Yeah. I mean, and you the were pause. You were, you were just, it, you can only be where you're, you know, where you are in that moment, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can only move forward. The I should have. Oh, do not shit all over yourself. Do not because we don't go there. You can't. You can't <laughs> go there. Um, I mean, my name. My main tips are. I like to say, I'm not the first one who's had to go through this particular stressor, and mm -hmm. I like to tell my clients that as well. Like, what information can you gather from somebody who's gone through this? I mean. Mm -hmm. I thank God I brought my husband in. I was like, he knows how to do Skype. Um, and then yeah. also just our, we as women, although in our minds we're thinking, oh, she has it together. We also know that we can call on any of our, of our women companions to mm -hmm. come to each other's aid. I mean, oh yeah, that we are better together. Just don't suffer alone is really Okay. Don't not suffering alone is probably the strongest superpower we have as women compared to men. <laughs> yeah, you know, I lived alone for a long time and in, in a city that uh, I had a lot of acquaintances, but not a lot of good friends. And it, I got used to doing everything by myself or calling in help from professionals. And it took me a while when I started my business to realize, oh, I can call my friends again. I can call other entrepreneurs. I can call my mm -hmm. mastermind group and and really mm -hmm. uh, get the help I needed in the moment. So are better together. Yeah, I love it. We um, are better together. Excellent. So when we come back, because uh, we got to take a quick break, but we will be talking a little bit about Ryan's uh, methodology called Calm. And I love it. I read the book last night and I hope you will too, but we've got to take a quick break. So this is Miriam Ortiz Pino on the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And we'll see you in a few seconds. The free one minute mail solution works for email too. And you can download it at the link below or over there. Maybe it's a the link. And I am speaking to Ryan Lanier of Organizing for Good today. And she has this methodology called the Calm Method. And she wrote a book about it. And we will have the, the details for that for you. Um, but I want her to tell us a little bit about what prompted her to develop the Calm Method. What do you got, Ryan? Well, we're going to have to get in the Wayback Machine before this thing called COVID, OK? Right. <laughs> the way and back. yeah and um you know in my eternal self-development uh, process i was following the one thing mm -hmm. which is a really great book and community and they were doing a 66 day challenge mm -hmm. to, to establish a habit and i said god i need to work on being more prepared and more on time because i am 
I'm forgetting things. I'm getting halfway down the street without what I need. I'm, I'm just in a constant panic. Um, and you know, doing all the things I don't want to be, I don't want to be that person. Right. It wasn't even that I just felt like I was letting myself down. I was letting everyone down. My ch- I was not a good example. So I decided to dial in. That was going to be my 66 day challenge is to get out the door on time, actually early with mm-hmm. what I needed to be able to get to my destination calmly. And this is not even going places that were new, like even going to places I was going repeatedly, mm-hmm. I still was late. So I sat down with myself and I'm like, all right, I know as a college graduate, there are some things I can do. And um, as I started thinking about it, I realized it spelled out calm. <laughs> Calendar, nice. alarm, launch pad, mobilize. And I was like, okay, okay, universe, I hear you. Not only are you giving me the tools, you're giving me a cool way to package it up. And then the pandemic hit. And I just realized I had time to write a book about it to nice. help other women. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it, I'm so grateful that it is impactful. I get messages about how impactful and like, it's like, you can start doing it right now. This is not like you need mm-hmm. to block out the next six weeks, two hours a day to learn that. No, it's like now, now, now. And that yeah. makes all the difference. I love that you started it from the one thing. Cause the one thing is a book, everybody about the be better habit. <laughs> yeah. And it's about incremental improvements to have exponential results. And the calm method, like I was reading your book last night, Ryan, and it, it's short, you guys, it only takes like an hour, hour and a half. And it, um, it's tiny steps you can take to um, just create that calm for yourself as you go about your day. And I realized I have that system in place. I didn't know it was the calm methodology. I didn't know there were actual distinct aspects of it. It's just something I did because I grew up in a household where I was the one standing by the front door waiting for everybody else to mm-hmm. remember all the stuff they had to take mm-hmm. with us, mm-hmm. which is why I became an organizer in the first place. I was ah. the kid waiting by the door for everybody else. So um, I love that 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 was your your visual about the whole thing is, is the door. Um, so tell us what, go a little bit into let's just go over each of the steps okay. so okay tell us the tell us the four things that are so important okay well it was four that actually became six right. so c is for confirm your calendar because just making a quick phone call an email a location check like can really either uh set yourself up or tank you if you don't do it and having mm-hmm. been there sometimes so c is for confirm your calendar a is for is arm your alarm because we do not need to be looking at the clock all the time we don't we don't have to right we mm-hmm. have alarms in our phones we have alarms in she who should not be named out loud um, <laughs> um and setting actually i realized that setting two alarms there's the alarm that says are you almost ready to go and then there's mm-hmm. the alarm so arming your alarms laying out your launch pad which is kind of where i fell off today of being ready for this is knowing knowing what you need um and you can gather these things i say by the door because that's Mm -hmm. where you go um got to be careful if you have animals or small children but always gathering the things by the door so it's lay out your launch pad Mm -hmm. so you have the things you need and you can constantly be adding to those and then really important between L and M is the pause. Cause there's so many times where if we had just breathed for about five seconds, we would have said, Oh, right. I've got something in the refrigerator or mm-hmm. oh, I'm, you know, I'm wearing the wrong shoes. Have you left the house in the wrong? Your slippers are so comfortable. Yeah, we have. I did during COVID once. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And then um, M, M is for mobilize into motion. So you've confirmed, set your alarms, laid out your launch pad, done the pause, you mobilize into motion. And then you get to celebrate because you're not going off with your hair on fire you, or, or you're just doing better. It's really, like we said, perfectionism is not the goal. Right. It's how many times can we do it and just not feel like, a super hot mess. 
that is the celebration. Right. And when you do it over and over, people, you develop the habit. And so you're not even actually thinking about it at the same level. And so you're conserving energy that you can use for more creative endeavors later in the day. Um, it becomes automatic behavior. Um, I always know when something is really wrong these days when I fail to do my out the door routine. Like if I get somewhere and I don't have the right stuff and I know it's sitting right there in my launch pad, I'm like, I must be really tired or depleted today because that never happens. Or that one day I got to the store with my slippers. There was, I was not feeling good that day and that's what interrupted it. But it's, um, I love that. It's easy steps you can take and then it is um, just repeating it until it becomes a habit. Mm -hmm. Is that what you found too? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, mm -hmm. we do fall off. Right. And that's yeah. a great, it's great to notice, Oh, wow. I've got too much on my plate. I need to, I need to simplify a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yes, it does. It, you, you strengthen with your, your victories. You know how it feels mm -hmm. to be more organized. Yeah. And the celebrations help overwrite that feedback loop of, I'm sorry, I'm a failure. So every time you celebrate, you guys, it's a little piece of rewiring that's going on. Can't sure. discount the the celebrations. Neuroplasticity. <laughs> exactly. Um, we've got to take another quick break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And I'm speaking with Ryan Lanier of Organizing for Good about the Calm Method. And when we get back, we're going to talk a little bit about how people seek organization and might be going about it just a little bit incorrectly. So we'll be, be back right after this break. The Streamline Clutter Solution online course will help you gain control of your stuff and space. What are you waiting for? The links are around here somewhere. I'm speaking with Ryan Lanier of Organizing for Good. And her calm method helps people develop a habit that can provide exponential results. Um, it also has a nice flexibility to it, so you don't have to be perfect with it. You get better at it all the time. And we wanted to move into a little bit of talking about how women think about being organized or getting organized. And, you know, it, it's really probably more of that wanting to feel on top of things and wanting to be organized, not get organized, right? Mm -hmm. Do you oh. recognize a, a distinction in that, Ryan? Oh my gosh, yes. Um, it's when people say, well, I know I want to lose weight, but I don't want to do the work. <laughs> yeah. Magic pill. They want a magic but pill. Exactly. You know, I, we're, we're throwing out things that we don't want to hear anymore. Pinterest perfect. And mm -hmm. someday when I'm organized, well, it's you're not a... It's not an end point. It's not. It's the journey that you're, you're, when you think about it that way, you're missing the journey. And the journey is full of lessons. Every yeah. time you make a mistake, every single day, there's so many lessons. Mm -hmm. But if you're not keeping your eyes open to the fact that that is part of the process, instead beating ourselves up because I didn't do this right, um, you know, you're actually holding yourself back from Mm -hmm. being organized you're you're telling yourself you stink you suck whatever and you're learning and that's how you're supposed to be if we could you know, repackage getting organized as like becoming freaking awesome because that's what it yeah. is <laughs> oh yeah I consider it setting yourself up for success mm -hmm. because you don't get organized when you get organized or you set the intention to get organized all you do is rearrange your stuff. You mm -hmm. aren't actually making the decisions or the distinctions or setting up a system that you can use long term. You're just moving your stuff around. Mm -hmm. Do you find that too? Oh, yes. Yeah. And I'll say yes. And mm -hmm. yes, you need to move your stuff around because, you know, you realize this isn't working. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, you have to go back and do it again. If you tell yourself, well, clearly I sucked because I didn't do it right the first time. You're missing the lesson again. Mm -hmm. It's an evolution. You're evolving. You're like, oh, well, that worked for me for a bit. But hey, I've grown. And now I know how to use this space better. This is a yay me moment. This is a not like, here I go again. I have to do it all over again. I mean, 
Right. This is what I want to shake women's necks about. You yeah, are doing it right. It's about thinking it through in terms of how can I be better? How can I make it easier? How can I eliminate a couple steps or a couple things from the process? It's not about hiding it just so the space feels clear. And yeah. I think that's the, the yeah. piece that, that gets overlooked a lot is that deeper piece of, of evaluating your things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm glad that there's tools out there like the clutter bug and, you know, mm -hmm. so people can know, oh, it's okay that I need my things out, that I, as soon as they're behind a closed door, I can't, I don't know it's there. That's okay. Ah, yeah. right. It's also okay to have different kinds of organization in different parts of your house because of how you use stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I use these clear um, or fairly clear magazine holders because I am the kind of person that needs my work to be out, but I also want it to be contained. Mm -hmm. um, and I've tried using binders and stuff and um, they don't work for projects for me. They right. only work for reference materials if they're in the right place. Mm -hmm. So know that, but in my kitchen, everything is very put away except for all the stuff I have on my counter. But <laughs> it's it's identified as that's where that stuff lives. So, um, because yeah. You, you've identified how things work for you yes. in different situations. You are the best expert of your life, like each of us. Mm -hmm. We're the best expert on our own life. We're constantly seeking gurus and other people for information. And we think all of a sudden, well, this is how I should be. And we try to pull on that whole, like with the call method, right? Mm -hmm. Even with the call method, maybe the, the setting the alarms is not something you need as much as laying out your launch pad or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're going to have pieces of it that are more important to you than others. Each one is not ex equal in its priority for you. You have to identify which one is works best for you. Right. And I think it's important to recognize um, especially as women, it is up to us. It's not that you're incapable of being organized or getting organized. It's that you haven't learned to be organized and it mm. is a process and it's a learned skill. Mm. It's not actually something we're born with. Some people it's harder for, but it's learnable. If you can drive a car, you can be organized. That's Absolutely. the amount of Absolutely. simultaneous thinking that needs to happen, which is not the same as multitasking and the switching, the oh. task oh. switching. Okay. But <laughs> That's actually really fascinating. I've never thought about yeah. getting organized being similar to learning to drive a car. That is. It's just a series of steps that you follow mm -hmm. until you do them naturally Absolutely. and tying it to your bigger picture of why you want to do it. I mm -hmm. think we don't think very much about what we actually want in this world. We try to live up to everybody else's expectations without knowing what our own standards and expectations are and what I, we want. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, okay. So I feel like there was some other point I wanted to mention about that. <laughs> and, you know, we, it's gone right out of my brain. It, it happens. It happens. There was something um, about tying it to business, but I can't remember what it was. It'll come back. Well, well I, I would I would offer that mm -hmm. using the call method and, and, and our journey towards getting more organized, mm -hmm. it's so we can do that big thing. Instead of just constantly being on the freight train hamster wheel, we, day after day, just putting out fires. Like we wanna actually like do that big, whatever it is, the big thing that we can't get to because we're drowning in mm -hmm. all the, the, the doldrums. You know, we're, we're staying small because of disorganization. Yeah, and I think that was part of the point I wanted to make too. The more you do this, the more you think about it at this deeper level, the more you can anticipate what might happen. Mm. Things are uncertain all the time, not mm. just during COVID. They oh. were always uncertain. Yes. You yes. just right. didn't have anything interrupt you yeah. on that level. So if we think about um, how uncertainty plays into this whole concept, um, which we will do after the break. We've got to take another quick one. 
Um, I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And I am speaking with Ryan Lanier of Organizing for Good. And we'll talk more about um, the uncertainty and anticipation of said uncertainty when we come back. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. We were just about to make some points about how using this method can help you anticipate things so you can recuperate and recover in uncertainty. What um, what kinds of things do you think help women navigate that uncertainty and, and, and help anticipate the problems? Well, <clears throat> as women and especially caretakers of either small people or parents or oftentimes spouses, our time is rarely our own. Like that's where that's where so many of the uncertainties come from. Like we have a plan. We know what we want to do. We have big goals, right? Mm -hmm. But what happens almost every single day is the wheels are falling off the bus because of other humans mm -hmm. who are who we love dearly. We love them dearly. But sometimes mm -hmm. could they just give us some time where we are not jumping in to save all their stuff? Like, I think that's where we, that's where the, I mean, we anticipate mm -hmm. that, the, I don't know, I think it's better if you anticipate that your plan is going to go off the rails. And so when it doesn't as much, you're yeah. like, hey, that wasn't as bad. But that is just the way, like, you're going to have, you have to plan less, right? You have mm -hmm. to maybe 60 to 80, 80 is pushing, probably 60% schedule yourself. Mm -hmm. Because the you buffer. have- The buffer, we need the buffer. We need the buffer because your energy mm -hmm. and like literal other situations are gonna yeah. come up. Yeah, and um, I was reading a thing about, you know, the, the military uses scenario planning and think tanks use mm. scenario planning. And if you use, if you apply that concept to your own life, it helps you build habits because you're anticipating what could go wrong, what usually trips you up, what gets in your way. How can you navigate that ahead of time in your own mind so that when it actually happens, your brain actually knows a little bit more about what to do in that situation, mm -hmm. right? And you need that buffer time to think those things mm -hmm. through. So what happens if I get to school and the kids have forgotten their stuff? Maybe you bring it to them twice. And then after that, you say, you forgot it. Good luck. Right. I'm right. still picking you up at the regular time. Like there's there's ways of using these tools, these contrivances, this information to help you navigate each and every day of your life. Absolutely. And learning, you know, yeah. from when something goes off the rails. Mm -hmm. What could, not, not in a shoulda, I shoulda this way, but it's like, what le lessons did I learn from this? My, mm -hmm. my 16 year old hates it when I say, okay, so that happened. How can you avoid doing that again? Mom, I don't right. know, I don't know. But he, he'll tell me every once in a while, mom, I used the pause and I'm like, yes. <laughs> so kids, moms, mm -hmm. women, this does work with other people around you. If you are mm -hmm. giving the responsibility to your other people like mm -hmm. hey don't you think if you laid out your launch pad for your for your um sports game tomorrow your sports game for whatever tomorrow <laughs> like if you've had that laid out and you realize oh my gosh i don't have any clean socks you get to think about that ahead of time and mm -hmm. wow that pushes off the squeeze and yeah we don't want the squeeze we we felt the squeeze today and this is just an ugly ugly place we want the calm method to help yeah. us out. And you know, the, the other thing I love about this uh, way of thinking about it is it helps you model good behavior for the other pr people in your life. Absolutely. Um, even if they're resistant, they're still absorbing it, you guys. Like, you know, Ryan's son actually uses it even though he resists it. <laughs> um, and I noticed, you know, when your husband was helping us troubleshoot, he was well aware of your process and was able to help both of us navigate that. So that 
you know, they learn. They do. And then it uh, helps everybody yes. out. Um, okay. So what do you think we can do to encourage women to enjoy the process more, to stop thinking of all the things that are going wrong and start thinking of all the things that are going right. Do you have any tricks for that? Well, I always go back to, we're not the first one to have gone through something like this. How can we navigate it? What information, what community can we create around ourselves so we don't feel like we're the only one who's sucking? Yeah. And that's what's so great about the world today and us being able to be, you know, it's digital, but there's still a closeness and a, and an affirmation that, Hey, I am, I'm willing to answer any question you've got what, and you're willing to help me with whatever I have going on. I think a community and accountability mm -hmm. is the special sauce. It is the secret sauce to helping us go places that we don't, we're not able to do by ourselves because we're yeah. telling ourselves we suck, but and, I'm not going to tell you you suck. Yeah. And, or we are so blind to our own issues that it's so obvious to everyone around you what you're doing wrong, but you don't see it yourself. And so having a trusted arena where you can get that feedback and know it's coming from a place of love and not um, oh, judgment yeah. is oh. so important. Oh my um, gosh. Yeah. So I know you have a couple of groups that you run and I love that, you know, I've, I've tried a couple over the years and some have been more successful than others, but it looks like yours are great. And, um, I always suggest people have some sort of a mastermind group and everybody has some sort of a, another kind of affinity group that they belong to just so that they can have these conversations and have someone to call on when they need it. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about your group. I'm especially intrigued about this lose weight in your inbox challenge you've got coming up <laughs> in one of them. Well, again, it's just, we all feel like we suck, right? And so let's, let's come together and get rid of lots of emails. Um, just focus together. Yeah. I, 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 we do a lot of co-working where people are like, mm -hmm. I would never still be here if I didn't mm -hmm. know we were all working together. That is my paid membership. I also have, um, you know, free Facebook group too. It's just bring what you have and, and share with each other and lift each other up and ears to listen. I, I really do feel like um, when you hear someone else struggling with something, whether you've been through it or not, you just feel like, okay, I'm all right. I, we're all we're all growing together. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's because women are amazing. <laughs> we kind of are, and we, we you are. know, especially when we stop judging each other. Stop judging each mm -hmm. other, you guys. Mm -hmm. um, we'll wrap this up and and you know give you some great takeaways after this break. I am Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on the Bold Brave TV Network, and we'll be right back. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. I want to just kind of recap what we've gone over today. So what, what do you think the main takeaway you'd like people to have from this is, Ryan? Is that the process of getting more organized to help you feel better should be your main goal every day. And the way to move forward on that is to have a community. Yeah. Tell us a little yeah. bit about your um, membership group, which sounds really great. Oh, my goodness. So before COVID, I was an in-home, one-on-one, you know, closets, kitchens, loved it, loved it. And COVID said no. So I was like, hmm, how are we going to do this differently? And I started doing paper organizing workshops online. And I was like, people are on steroids when they are with each other on mm -hmm. zoom yeah. and i was like okay this is what i want and so i started a membership um a year and a half ago called the find focus and fight distraction together um and it is a co-working it's three times a week we come together and we we co-work and we support each other and um it's a growing membership i i it's more beautiful every day. I am just thrilled. That just, sounds fantastic. How so, can people find out about that? Um, you go to my website, uh, organizing for good as a four in the URL. Um, mm -hmm. There's a tab there called the Find Focus membership, and it tells you all about it. Um, mm -hmm. It's a month to month. There's no like six months or whatever. But um, I think pretty much uh, when you know you're a fit, 
you're in. <laughs> you're Excellent. in like <laughs> Yeah, it's um, like I've recently joined a membership group that has a, a working together co-working hour once a week. And it is amazing when I can make oh. it. Um, it really does help you focus. So I so love powerful. that. So powerful. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Ryan. Um, I want to just take one quick minute to tell everyone how this applies for the streamlined connection. You know, we talk about how being organized versus getting organized is an issue. And this just takes it a little bit deeper. Add one piece to the puzzle that how do you get out the door on time and arrive at your destination cool and fresh as a daisy? You use the calm method. And so I just wanted to, to you know, remind you that you can use that and there are ways to apply it to your business as well, especially the stuff about anticipating uncertainty and thinking through your process. Um, and in the book, Ryan has a lot of things about um, meeting, being uh, arriving for a meeting or something like that. So it's obvious that you can apply these same things. Um, don't forget, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, you can email me at miriam at morethanorganized.net. You can see more information about how you can work with me and what I have to offer at morethanorganized.net. And we're going to take a break for the next couple of weeks because technically right now is holiday season. So we're going to be off for two weeks and we'll be back in January. And I will be talking to James Lott Jr., who um, has been running his own TV shows and YouTube stuff for a long time and taught me a lot about what I know. And he's just fun to talk about anyway. I mean, talk with, not about, actually both. <laughs> for those of you that know James, it's both. Um but I'm really looking forward to that in the new year. Don't forget to tell all your friends because as Ryan mentioned, organizing is so much more fun together. And in the meantime, I'm Miriam Ortiz-Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection and have a delightful day. <laughs>